hooray. I pack my bags. I knew it was going to happen. I mean, I don't feel that the story of my big fat Greek wedding ended. So I think it's just a, a, a continuing family saga. And um, it felt natural to hear that there was going to be a third one. To reunite with all my castmates, well, it was particularly dynamic because we all met in Greece. Uh, I mean, after all these years to see everybody in our homeland and uh, the movie's homeland, that was pretty powerful and very emotional, actually, um, especially since Michael Constantine was not there. So in place of Michael there, we tried to form a unity to, in support of him. I think the script does honor him. I think it's really about him and um, I kind of the end of his story, kind of the uh, full circle of his story to go back to the place that he was born in and, and from his growing up in Greece, he was able to um, impart all the fabulous wisdom and philosophy that he did in the last two movies. And um, so I think it was a, a really natural way to do this third movie. It's like a, a storybook village and it just steps right off the page and really um, enhances, I think, the story that Nia wrote. It was really easy to be the character in that village. You know, um, you didn't feel like an actress. The minute I walked on, I felt like this was my homeland. It was really powerful. It was a fabulous asset to have Nia as the director because, um, first of all, she never had to stop and say, let me ask the writer, because she is the writer. So I thought it was very fluid, and um, I thought it enhanced the scenes because she knew exactly what she wanted. You know, she's lived this life. That was really beneficial. I think gratitude is the first word that I feel that I would have been asked to do this part. And the part was, um, I didn't know it at the time, was really close to who I am um, as an Armenian woman. And it was a real gift to be able to play a character that's a little larger than life, but really no larger than life of every Armenian woman that I know. So it feels really natural to play the part. That's one thing, that's the kind of character development. But over the last 20 years, I, and I've done many things over the last 20 years, I would say without a doubt, this character and this movie or franchise is the one thing that people, if they know me, know. <laughs> <laughs> they might not know the Tony Award winning performance. I mean, they might not know of anything I've done on Broadway or any television show I've done recently or that's on the air now, but they know my Big Fat Greek wedding. I think that every family, it's been my experience in the last 20 years, that no matter what your nationality is or your culture is, everybody has a Joey Fatone or has an Aunt Vula. So they're all easily identifiable. So I think people feel like they're part of an extended family when they come up to Joey or they come up to me. Um, no one's shy when they say it. They're totally excited. And I don't mean excited because they're seeing somebody that they know. I think they feel like, well, they're seeing a family member and they're really uh, so warm and generous in their um, excitement when they anybody really comes up to me, so it's very comforting. If this movie can bring some pleasure, some act of decency, some act of joy in the place that we're in as a country, as a world, I think we feel coming out of the um, pandemic detached and we felt isolated and I think this movie bridges all that and says come into our arms and you're no longer alone. I think the movie will do that based on the last 20 years of people coming up to me. I think people will sit back in their seats and feel taken care of. When we heard that number three was happening I, I was deeply excited I didn't expect it, I really didn't. Like we sort of dreamed of it. 
And the first two films we shot in beautiful Toronto, and it was gorgeous, as Chicago. And we really had a great time. Mm. We really explored Toronto and had a really good time. It was a good bonding time. The first film was 22 years ago. Second film was seven years ago. So when we heard about this one and there was a whisper on the ground that it was going to be in Greece, it was ridiculously exciting. I've only been to Greece a very small portion at a time back in the day with NSYNC. It was in Crete, actually, so we never got a chance to see any. I've never been to Mykonos. I still haven't been there yet, but to be in Athens and then to be here in Corfu where we were shooting is freaking awesome. You know, it was one of those things because for me, when I was with the group, it was like one or two days, you're in and you're out. Here, I'm here for a couple of weeks. So then it's first of like getting adjusted to the time zone. And then it was finally, all right, let's go to this beach. Let's check out this place. Let's have a drink here. Let's find out just culture. Let's just go see this. Let's go see the Poseidon's, you know, building of this and that. And it was just really, really cool just to be able to have the time to do that and to be here in Greece. We get to do all the really fun stuff. Like suddenly we're on a travelogue of Greece doing everything fun that you could possibly want to do in Greece. And there we are doing it together yeah. and having a ball because he's always cracking me up, making me laugh. So to be here all together has been incredible. It's like a reuniting of, of a true family. And we have this added bonus of all these delicious new characters. And the new actors that are in this movie are just honestly stars on the rise. Like these, the young actors who have been cast in the roles of Christos, Kamar, and of course we have beautiful Elena back playing Paris and Elias playing Aristotle. So we've just got a wealth of new characters. Honestly, having Nia as the director, she always, I'm to be honest, always felt like the director to me uh, because, you know, she was the one that wrote everything on paper. She was the one that was her family. So we always went to her yeah. and kind of was like, hey, what, what, what do you feel or what is this or what should I do? How should I do it? And that's kind of kind of how it went about every from one, two and three. That's the truth. I mean, the passion and the heart of this story coming from her and her true life it, it always informed everything that the the past two directors, you know, they guided beautiful films and films that were delightful to watch. But Nia was truly the heart of it and we did run everything by her and we wanted her input always. And it was always fun to be in a scene with her and then, you know, she often would let us all run over and look at playback and that's a lot of fun and mm. do it again. and. And having her actually sitting at that director's chair has been so exciting. And I've been pulling my camera out all the time and taking pictures of it because I just feel like a, a proud cousin, yeah, sister, yeah, true. whatever. It's just gorgeous watching her do it. Agreed, agreed. Yeah, because yeah. she's doing, you know, all she's three doing hats. She's doing a great job. She's writing, she's directing, and she's acting in it as well. It's exciting. So it's interesting when she's like, all right, cut. Now I have to get in the makeup. Bye. And yeah. she goes off and comes back. So, you know, it's, it's a lot of hard work. But, you know, we try to, for us, it's, I, I think she, that's what's great about her, and I think the reason why she did bring a lot of us and pretty much all of us back was due to the fact that she trusts us. She knows that we're going to handle the job and do what we need to do, and she can worry about what she needs to do there on that side. It's almost like, all right, yep, cool, great, I love it. All right, perfect, perfect, let's go. It's been kind of interesting because of the fact that, uh, as you know, that, that Michael Constantine passed away, who played Gus, uh, who played our uncle, basically. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it was one of the things, because I remember that they were even talking about they had the script and everything was written, it was done, and we were ready to kind of go. And, you know, obviously the pandemic hit and everything hit, and then he got very sick. And I even remember even her, you know, telling us that he's texting, even saying, oh, you know what, go do the film without me, blah, 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 even though if I'm you know, not okay, kind of thing. And sadly enough, he did pass. And we were like, okay, I guess we're not doing this. This is not happening now. And she found a way to pay an amazing homage to him, but also, you know, really open, I think, I don't know, open up the Portocalis family a lot more. Yeah. You know, you get to see them a lot more. And to write it. such an interesting twist of journey for him. He's not in our film. He's in all of our hearts. He's not physically there, but he's really present. And because of the delicious twist in his life to give him that kind of exciting, unexpected background, we all feel him and even some people get to say, there you go, mm -hmm. like so characters get to actually have lines. So, so we feel his energy and he's in the story and... And now it's on my leg. Yeah. Oh yes, Joey Fatone. Okay, Joey has a brand new tattoo. It says, there you go, Gus. There you go, the, uh, Greek, Greek flag, flag and Gus.
you know, obviously it's 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 part of me. It's this, these movies were all a part of me. And, and he you, just had you know, that tattoo done in Corfu. Yeah, like yeah. two days ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's been pretty amazing, you know, the impact that the Portocalis family had on the world. I honestly would say. I mean, it hit it hit home to a lot of different countries. I think just because. You always have the loud uncles or the loud family or, you know, the, the, the big whatever wedding it may be, yeah. whether it be Italian, you know, Greek, Irish, it doesn't matter. We all have those families that we have that bond and there's always whatever the tradition is, so you true. know, it could be completely different or whatever religion, but it's always that same connection and bond with the family. And that's kind of what comes And first. I've had people come up to me from Italian background, Indian, everything, and say, I don't care what that is, that it's Greek, that's my family. And they're Pakistani, they're yeah. French, they're Jewish, and they relate completely to it. For me, I always wanted to be an actor, but I was with a group in sync. And to be able to audition and be a part of this, you know, kind of thrown in. You'd gone in. into Plato and right to talk to Gary. Yeah, I, just wanted, I was just project. talking about some other stuff with NSYNC. And they happened to be like, well, there's an audition for a movie you might be perfect for because they just need you for a couple of days, but also you look Greek. So I went in, I wrote, you know, read the thing, and they're like, all right, we'll, we'll let you know in a couple of weeks. And they called me back. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so, you know, coming there and, and, and you know, into Toronto and, and meeting Gia and Nia and, and everybody, it was one of those things where. Here's your family. Let's 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 act. Let's perform. And then as you are start acting, though, you start performing and hanging out and then spending time. And then again, 20 years, 22 years later, we're we're still here. You know, the third one. You know what's really cool about the third one? I think it's now that perfect timing. Oh my Everybody god! Everybody needs this kind the of. The world film, has been know? a little sad the last few years. I mean, there's always a lot of heavy stuff going on in the world, but it's ready for another. My big fat Greek wedding. It just really is. I love for audiences in this film that it's dealing with acceptance and actually being on your own journey. Even though the wedding, there's a wedding, and even though each of the films has had a wedding, this one for me is really about a, a solo journey, but in the most joyous way. You know, Gus is gone. Maria is now on her own. Nia's character Tula is on her own journey for her father. And it's just, we meet the new character, Victory, who's incredible. And Alexandra has raised that boy alone. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's really about solo journeys, mm -hmm. but uniting of a whole Everybody village. It's a very strong film. It made me cry my eyes out, this film. I don't know if I'm more emotional at my age now than I was 22 <laughs> years ago. I cry when I read a Hallmark card, so yeah. Yeah, right. it, it really happens. it really touched me, this one. It really touched me. Uh, it's, again, it's, it's, it's extraordinarily it's, deep. It's exciting because you're also getting to see into the Portocalis family. Like you said, you know, we're actually going to roots now. We're going to their hometown, yeah. their land. You know, we're, the going home back. Land. we're going so back. So I think that's what's really cool to get a chance to now see the culture of and I mean, obviously of Greece and the culture of, of what they have to offer and everything. So it's, it's really cool. You know, Ian was the, uh, a teacher in the first one and the second one, he had moved up to principal. And now Ian's retired, because Ian are, and John are the same age. Uh, we're in our 60s. And um, that's what you do. And I think he's adjusting well to that. Paris is off to NYU. Maybe only a year or so has gone by from the time we saw the family last. We're coming back here to Greece for a special family visit, and the whole family's coming, which is fantastic. It's like people you go to high school with, and you leave home and... You go back home once a year or every few years and you bump into those people and 20 or 30 years have passed and you just pick right up. So it's, it's like that. So when she said, I'm going to direct this one, uh, it was not a shock to me because I I'd, I'd already went down that road with her. Um, but the one thing that changed since then, just, it's like pro now. She knows what she wants. She, she's not trying to figure anything out. She's telling the cameraman what to do and the guy with the sound and us actors, and she's acting 
Also, so it's a it's a ten ring circus, not a three ring circus. And and just watching her do it now for I've been here for a month or longer, and I haven't seen her even get close to cracking. I crack, and I'll yell, "Hey, we need everybody's attention!" And she'll just calmly say, "I'm going to need everyone's attention right now." And I don't know how she does it. I don't know how she doesn't go berserk. But she's really good at it. Chula and Ian are just about where you think they would be in, in their life. There's not a lot of changes. They're still in love. They love each other, and, and it's a really healthy relationship. They still laugh at each other's jokes, which is nice. Paris is a, a little bit of a, a problem, just like any young girl would be who's in her first or second year of college. A big worry for the parents. And um, there's always some kind of love involved with your kid when they're away. And that love might be coming here too on, on a trip to Greece. Uh, so that's kind of exciting. I was making my Big Fat Greek Wedding too, and I started to feel sadness toward the end of it. I felt like the story needs to go on. You know, three always feels good, a trilogy. And so I thought, I have to do another one. And I wanted to tell the story about going back to Greece. And the original story was going to be, of course, that we go with Michael Constantine's character back to his village, because that's all my dad ever wanted, was for us to visit his village. And so I wrote this movie about taking Michael Constantine back to Greece. And then we, of course, lost Michael Constantine in the same year that I lost my dad. And I decided to just channel grief through my fingertips, and here's why. I realize if I'm going through it, then the audience must be too, because we started together, and in the same way that they're also going through family issues, people are growing up, kids are going off to college, well, of course, we've also probably lost a parent too. I wanted to pay homage to parents because I think in the familial journey that we are all on, you start as a child and then you start to parent your parents and then eventually you have to become the parent. We all have a family unit and how it grows and evolves. And so I wanted to pay tribute to Michael Constantine because he, everyone's got a Michael Constantine story. He's funny. And it's hard for me actually to even speak about him in past tense because he's so much a part of us. I've vacationed in Greece for years and years and then I get this outlandish idea that we're suddenly going to make a movie taking the big fat Greek family back to Greece. And so I, I wrote the script thinking there's no way they're going to let me do it. Suddenly we're in Greece and we're there and we're scouting locations and I was sending the cast pictures and images of like we're going to film here and this this set is available to us and this is the village that's its architecture matches this set that we're going to build and I just was telling them things but I did not expect it to come to fruition until the day I saw everybody in dance rehearsal and that's when I realized we're doing it. We're actually making this movie, and everybody's here in Greece, the homeland. I'm glad that I took the plunge to direct the third one. I, I do know that the uh, creative producers had wanted me to direct the second one, but I didn't feel that I was ready, even though I had been in the editing room on the first movie, um, in with the orchestra recording the score on the first movie and the second movie. I'm just, you know, I'm always there watching, watching, and learning and asking questions. Got to ask a lot of questions. And the, the producer Gary Getzman said, um, you know what the difference is between him and you? He pointed to the director on the second one, and he said he thinks he can do it. And that really stayed with me. And so I learned. In the time between the second and third one, while I was doing theater in New York, I studied, and I figured out all the angles, all the shot lists, everything I would need, everything I wanted to do. And then when they asked me to direct the third one, I very quickly said yes. I did a three-part process of preparation. I, I prepared the script, 
As the writer, I went through numerous rewrites and I took every note into consideration from the studio because they're wonderful partners. And I wanted to create a movie that we could all be invested in. And also, studio executives read a lot of scripts and they can spot ideas uh, that might not have been uh, filled to fruition, where they should go. So I made sure to absolutely have a script that was in shape. To prepare for the role of Tula, I, I just, I watched the first two movies, I tried to match the voice. The way I write is from a place of motivation. In every single scene, I ask myself, what does this character want? What does that character want? So throughout the entire movie, I went back through the script and I asked myself what I wanted in every single scene. And because Tula is the fixer of the family, sometimes that's for me, an easy arc, but at the same time, you have to be careful that it's relatable to the audience. It can't be uh, the all-encompassing motivator of a person because nobody is just the fixer. They're also this, per this part and this part, and they have multifaceted par parts of their character. For directing, I did shot lists, copious, copious amounts of shot lists with Barry Peterson. We went to locations, we looked at the sun, we charted where it would be, I created what I thought the scene would be. He would ask me, who is the most important character in this scene? And then he, we would begin to build a multi-camera shot list. We went to this town and it was very quiet, only 20 inhabitants, just like the scene when the family arrives in the village. And we were walking around and I said to Barry, you know what I really need for that scene when we're looking down from the rooftop, I would love to have a vantage point, top of the village looking down. And we're looking and we see a, a church spire, but I'm telling you, it had a rickety balcony around it. And I was like, oh yeah, this is where it ends. No, we're not climbing that thing. We have 20 crew members with us and we're walking around looking for where can we go up, up high, whispering in this town. And this man appears here, like right here, and he goes, Nia Vardalos. And I go, yes, hello, how are you, sir? And he says to me in Greek, are you looking for a high up point? And I say, yes, and he goes, come to my house. And so we walk, 20 crew members and me, we walk through the town, he opens the door, we walk through his house, he has three floors. We walk to the top floor, top floor. He doesn't tell his wife, who's sunbathing nude, that we're coming, okay? So she sees him and she goes, what the hell are you doing right now? And then she goes, Nia Vardalos, and stands up and she takes the world's smallest face cloth and puts it over one breast and comes and hugs me. And we got that house. <laughs> I love it that for 20 years, the audience has told me that they see their family in my family. I love that. And I write from the point of view of if it's happening to me, it's probably happening to you. So I just want the audience to see themselves in the movie again. I want them to, to know I hear them and that um, it, the audience is very important to me because I am Tula, and in so many ways, if I am Tula, then so are they.